Kendra Miller is accused of helping. Sometimes I would have call-ins. Uh, if they had a need for a canine of the hours I wasn't working, I would be called in to assist with any way I could. Now, the department's divided into East Precinct and West Precinct. Were you, as a canine officer, assigned to one or the other? I was assigned. My immediate supervisor was uh, Sergeant Ryan McGee. However, I would patrol both East Side and West Side areas. Now, at around 1 o'clock, while you were on duty, did you... Uh, all go out in reference to some sort of a person jumping out of a car, getting out of a trunk, or something to that effect. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. Where were you? Were you with anyone? <coughs> what went on? At the time, I was just patrolling by myself when I heard the call go out. I don't remember my exact location of where I was at. Um, I believe I was patrolling somewhere in the area of um, Prince Avenue, Millage Avenue, uh, probably consider that the northeast area, um, probably a little bit uh, north of the downtown area when I heard the call go out. Uh, started to respond to the area. Um, I remember hearing on the radio a uh, suspect name given as Jamie Hood. Uh, at the time, uh, at that time, I started looking in our uh, iLeads computer system uh, for any kind of leads or possible locations of where the individual uh, might 
might be going. Um, I developed, uh, through looking through Eileen's uh, possible address at 240 Sycamore Drive, I believe the apartment number was uh, Ju J8, Juliet 8. And uh, that particular area, are you familiar with what kind of a complex that was or the name of the complex? Yes, sir. Um, from my times of uh, patrolling from 1999 to 2003, I patrolled the west side. I was pretty familiar with the west side of town. Uh, I knew Sycamore Drive uh, fairly well. And uh, those apartments at that time, did you know what apartments that might have been that you had a possible address for? Regency Park Apartments. And just for point of reference, and we'll show it on a diagram uh, later, if you're going down Sycamore, where is it would be the last apartment complex on your right. Sycamore Drive is only about three-fourths of a mile long, half a mile, three-fourths of a mile long before it dead ends, and the, that particular apartment complex is the last one there on the right. Is an apartment complex across the street from Regency Park? Yes, sir. And what are those? Not positive on the name, but that's 235 Sycamore Drive. Okay. Now, after receiving that information from Eileen, what did you do? I actually began to respond towards uh, Sycamore Drive, um, and then I heard other officers in the area already uh, made contact by phone with uh, another officer. Um, at the time, he was a senior police officer, Matt Ring. Uh, he had stated that they had checked the area of Sycamore Drive, and at that point, we decided to meet for lunch. Okay. Did you actually, before lunch or before deciding to meet for lunch, actually gone into Sycamore yourself? No, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Matt Ring had indicated that he had checked it out and some other officers had actually patrolled through there. Okay. And so uh, you all decided to meet for lunch. You yes, sir. Matt Ring, any other officers at all? I believe it was just me and him. Uh, there may have been another officer that was going to meet us, but I, I, I really recall that it was him that met for lunch. And where were we all going to meet and where did you meet? Uh, we met at the Europi location there in uh, Beachwood Shopping Center off of Alps Road. And um, are you familiar with the uh, Chick-fil-A restaurant? Yes, sir. Uh, at that location? Yes, sir. In front of Beachwood. And as you face Chick-fil-A from Alps Road, where is your pie located as you face Chick-fil-A from Alps Road? It'd be to your left through the parking lot. And did you actually go over to see your pie and meet Matt Ring there? Yes, sir. And uh, tell us what happened while you were there. What did you do and then what happened? Uh, we had actually placed our order. Uh, we were just about ready to pay for our order uh, when we heard over the radio um, a call of shots fired. Uh, and I remember hearing what I believe to be somebody saying that I'm shot. Uh, I also heard uh, the particular area, I believe, was Sycamore Drive. Uh, I looked at uh, Matt Ring and said, we need to go. Um, and we ran out of the store heading towards Sycamore Drive. And uh, did you get in your patrol car? Yes, sir. And when you got in your patrol car, um, were you by yourself? Yes, sir. And did you respond? Yes, sir. And uh, did you basically turn on any emergency equipment? Yes, sir. I turned on, turned on my lights and sirens to re respond in emergency mode. And from the Europi there off Alps Road, can you tell us your, uh, your travels, direction of travel? Yes, sir. I turned left onto Alps Road, traveling uh, north to the intersection of West Broad Street, where I turned west onto West Broad Street from Alps. Uh, to, from there, continue traveling west until reaching the intersection of Sycamore Drive. Turned uh, left onto Sycamore Drive. And if I can, uh, when you turn left onto Broad Street, the way you turned off Alps, heading towards Sycamore, are you familiar with where a McDonald's restaurant is on your right there? Yes, sir. And is it right there on your right? Yes, sir. If you have um, the Hampton Inn on your right at the intersection of uh, actually Hawthorne and Broad, that would be that corner. After the Hampton Inn, there's an Applebee's, and after the Applebee's, there's a McDonald's. So they're one right after the other. And Sycamore Drive is down there to the left, just a little bit further. Yes, sir. Probably a, a third to half a mile of the path. Okay. And as you uh, proceeded on the Sycamore Drive, can you tell us uh, what you did? How did you proceed? And Proceeded uh, driving in emergency mode, 
uh, traveling down Sycamore Drive, uh, the first vehicle I encountered with a, a dark in color uh, van-like vehicle uh, stopped in the lane of traffic um, just near a business park. I continued down the road where I saw uh, two patrol cars parked um, uh, to the left. Um, one of them was actually pulled into an apartment complex driveway and the other patrol car was parked at an angle behind it. Um, when I arrived, um, I remember seeing um, Officer Kitchens uh, assisting um, Officer Howard, uh, who was uh, laying face down on the ground at the time, and also um, Officer um, Johnson was also uh, helping as well uh, with uh, Officer Howard. Um, uh, as I exited my patrol car, um, I noticed an individual laying down on the ground uh, just to the side of a red Chevrolet Suburban. Um, about that time, another officer, a Deputy Morgan, arrived. Uh, I had called out, I asked, who is this individual, um, uh, indicating to the person laying on the ground. Um, he would be later identified as Matthew Hood. He uttered and just yelled out, I didn't do anything, I'm the driver. Um, at that point, um, Deputy Morgan uh, placed him in custody. And did you see where he was placed at all? Uh, eventually, he was placed in the back of um, Officer Kitchen's patrol car. And before we go further, Deputy Morgan, uh, is he still living at this time? No, sir. He's passed away since then? Yes, sir. Now, can you tell us basically um, that dark van type, did you later determine or determine right then kind of what that may have been? First glance, I believed it was a taxi cab. I never uh, confirmed whether or not it was a taxi cab, but I believed it to be a taxi cab as I passed by. And as you observed all this, what did you do? Um, I began trying to collect information uh, as far as what happened. Um, I had an individual run up to me that told me he said he saw everything, saw who did it, and saw where he ran. Um, I asked him for a description of the individual. He gave me a description as a bald-headed uh, black man white t-shirt with some yellow writing on it, something yellow on the front, wearing blue jean shorts, uh, say that he was kind of a heavy muscular build uh, individual, and he told me that he had run west or ran down towards the dead end of Sycamore Drive before um, turning uh, into the uh, 235 Sycamore Drive address. He actually used his hands and he motioned that he had ran behind some buildings of 235 Sycamore Drive. I also had another individual, uh, a white male, come up to me. You there. Did yes, you sir. put that description out over the radio? Yes, sir, I did. Um, then, I'm sorry, you had another individual come up to you? Yes, sir. I um, had another individual, a white male, come up to me. Uh, I just remember him wearing a blue shirt. Um, remember him telling me uh, virtually the same thing. He described the, uh, the individual as, as a black male, bald head, muscular build, wearing a white T-shirt. said he last seen him running down Sycamore Drive. And at that point, I told those two individuals to uh, wait at the scene for some other officers um, to, uh, to, so that they could get their information uh, as far as being witnesses, and I was going to proceed down Sycamore Drive. Is that what you did? Yes, sir. Uh, prior to proceeding down Sycamore Drive, I, I did run to the patrol car that was parked in the oncoming lane. Um, I didn't realize it at the time uh, as I started to run back towards that patrol car, uh, Matt Ring stopped me. So there's nothing we can do. Um, excuse me. Um, at that point, I looked in uh, and did see um, Officer Christian, excuse me, had a gunshot wound to his neck that I could see and I could tell that he was uh, in fact deceased. At that point, I returned to my car, um, uh, drove down to Sycamore Drive a little ways to the first entrance of 235 Sycamore Drive, uh, blocked the entrance uh, in case there was another vehicle uh, that he might try to escape in, uh, began setting up a perimeter uh, on the radio for other officers trying to establish a, a large perimeter um, to try to contain uh, the suspect. And then what did you do? After some time had passed by, we heard on the radio of a carjacking. Um, and then after the carjacking, there was a vehicle description given out. I don't recall.
called a description of the vehicle. Uh, and then a little bit late, a little short time after that, I heard Officer Carry On Wright uh, advise he was on the Georgia 10 loop, the outer loop, uh, in pursuit of the uh, suspected carjacking or the, the car that had been carjacked. Um, listened on the radio for a little bit. At that point, I then left Sycamore Drive and started to respond in areas that I didn't hear other officers already in. To look for the suspect. And um, later in the day, what else did you do? Later that day, um, we basically went uh, from place to place uh, looking for uh, uh, Mr. Hood um, and continued to do that throughout the week. And uh, were there any locations that you went to inside the county as well as outside the county? Uh, throughout the week, yes, sir, I did. I believe that was um, Mr. Hood's grandmother's house up in Elbert County. I'm not sure if it was in the city limits of Elbert, and I don't have the exact address, and assisted um, Elbert County and uh, some additional officers with securing that house and searching that house. Uh, a couple other locations that were checked, um, just not necessarily the houses, but just areas uh, around houses and in the wood lines um, along Spring Valley Road, Winterville Road, Athens Road, uh, and then ultimately uh, wound up off of um, Bowley Drive in the Creekstone subdivision. Is that on March 25th? Yes, sir. And were you set up over there at some point? Yes, sir. I was directly behind the duplex um, holding the perimeter uh, with other officers. Were you relieved before any surrender at all? Yes, sir. Just prior to. Let me ask you if I can. Uh, your car equipped with a video? Yes, sir, it, it was. And, uh, when the emergency equipment, particularly the blue lights, the front blue lights are activated, is the video activated? Yes, sir. that video uh, it's automatically activated when the blue lights, the front blue lights come on? Yes, sir. It's automatically activated and it records uh, I believe it's the prior 30 to 45 seconds of time prior to the activation of the blue lights. So if I turn on the blue lights it's already it's been recording for 30 to 45 seconds prior to the blue lights coming on. And you can manually turn it on. It automatically comes on every time you turn on the blue lights. Yes, sir. Did your video record uh, at some point from one point to another on that particular day? Yes, sir. And have you watched that to see how far it recorded? Yes, sir. Where does it start? Uh, it starts uh, with my vehicle parked in the parking lot just in front of the Europop um, uh, eatery, and it ends um, sometime later. In the Beachwood Center parking lot, just in front of uh, the Europop uh, Pizzeria, you can see the Europop on the camera. And uh, you activated it. Your blue lights were activated when you got in the car. Yes. Sir. And so it went 30, 45 seconds prior to that. Yes. Sir. And then basically, how far did it record on, on that particular day, sir? I believe I've got 
probably had an hour or so of recording. I'm not sure exactly the exact amount. It's, it's a pretty long recording. And uh, when you basically arrived on Sycamore, where did you park in relation to Officer Howard's car? When I first arrived, um, as you're looking at my video, you'll see Officer Howard's car to the left uh, of the screen, and you'll see Officer Kitchens kind of to the right, so I've kind of parked in the middle between them and behind them. And did your uh, car uh, at that time uh, remain in that position, or was it moved at some point? It remained there uh, for a little while until I moved a little further down Sycamore Drive. And uh, where did you move it in relation to Officer Christian's car? I moved it to the first entrance of 235 Sycamore Drive. 235 Sycamore Drive, I guess the drive is shaped kind of like a horseshoe or a U-shape, and it's got two entrances. It's got a top entrance and a bottom entrance, and I parked at the top entrance. And uh, how did it continue to record at that time? Yes, sir. And from uh, from that point, did it? how long did it remain on? It remained on until I left. Um, I left the area. I traveled up uh, Broad Street. Um, I believe I uh, ended up on Hancock, West Hancock Avenue uh, at some point. And then uh, at some point, I think I was on Chase Street. And at that point, I turned it off. And from the time you moved it, which time it was turned off later, did you watch that part of the video as well? Yes, sir. Is there anything of note necessarily on that part? No, sir. And it is some length of, of video, is that correct? Yes, sir. Was there sound on your video that you watched at all that was recorded? There should have been sound. However, my microphone malfunctioned, uh, did not record any sound. Uh, there's the, this particular system. You have a transmitter that's on your belt that a microphone plugged into. And the microphone wire is very thin, and I think they had an issue with the microphone wire uh, breaking uh, over time. And there's no way of knowing that it's not functioning until you review your video and you realize you don't have any audio, and then you get a new microphone. Okay. Let me show you what's already been introduced as State's Exhibit Number 10. See that on your screen as well as up here on the screen. Yes, sir. And in front of you there is a laser pointer that's on the uh, bench there. Okay. And you see the area of uh, West Broad and Sycamore, sir. Yes, sir. I do. And uh, where is Sycamore come off at West Broad? Here? Right there. Uh, approximately where uh, Officer Howard's car was as well as that Chevrolet convertible. Yes, sir. Where is that? Right in there, that entrance there. The, the first entrance or the second one? Uh, I'm sorry, the, sec the second entrance. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, right here, you know what kind of business that is, sir? Uh, it's a Mexican restaurant. And how about that business right there next to it? That's the uh, Howard Johnson's. Motel. And these buildings here, do you recall what those are? They're it's a business buildings. It's a business park. I don't know the name of it. And this complex here, what is that? Do you remember? I believe the name of that is River's Edge Apartments. At the time, that was 200 Sycamore Drive. And at the time, could you cut through from Broad Street over towards Sycamore through that complex? Yes, sir. There was an entrance right about there. As you came down uh, uh, Sycamore, can you show us about where you parked? I understand the video will show the exact amount, but where did you park? Probably right, I know it's shaking a little bit, but right, right, right around in there, okay. just past that building that you can see. And after you parked, your video remained on yes, sir. throughout that time? And then you moved your car to about where? 
if you see that the entrance here, and you count down that building and that building, I was at this entrance here. And at that time, you uh, moved your car for what reason? We were told that um, the suspect, Mr. Hood, had run behind this building here, traveling in this direction. So I parked here, blocking this act, entrance and exit. And your video remained on during that time? Yes, sir. And it remained on until this time you turned it off later after you left that particular location? Yes, sir. And uh, as I've indicated before, from the time you were here until this time you turned it off later, is there anything of note on that particular video? No, sir. show you, uh, first of all, there is a DVD, state exhibit number 169. Do you recognize what that is, sir? Yes, sir. It's a DVD -R. And uh, is that the video of the, the entire recording on your car on that particular day? Yes, sir. Um, and you've watched that video, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and is it true and accurate? There's no alterations or Yes. And uh, again, it didn't have any sound, and the sound apparently was not working. That's correct. State Exhibit 170 is a, a DVD, and uh, can you tell the jury what that is? This is a recording of the same video. It's just shortened um, to just prior to me leaving the area of Sycamore Drive. And uh, it goes down after you move the car yes, sir. itself, and it doesn't record everything after Yes, sir. Okay. Now, at this time, the, uh, uh, let me ask you, is that a is that copy of just a portion of the video in State 169? Uh, yes, sir. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and is it true and accurate? There's been any, uh, is that correct? That is correct. Is there any additions or deletions to that? No, sir. And have you actually watched that to verify? Yes, sir. And after watching that, did you initial that particular? Yes, sir, I did. These are my initials. And I would tender state exhibit number 170 into evidence at this time. doing that off the off, do you know about how long that one is? Probably about 14 or 15 minutes, I believe. And the other state exhibit number 169 is about how long again? I want to say it's probably about an hour. And uh, Judge, let me, let me state this. We're more than happy to play 169 and play it to a point, you know,
it's in evidence. Uh, and, and, and it, are you tendering them 169? I'm not at this time. I'll do 170 as I think that that copy of well, our.
Yes, sir. responded to the radio call. What radio, what radio traffic did you receive? What radio traffic did you hear to make you respond to the case? The first radio traffic would have been um, the person jumping out of a trunk that was tied up in the area of Lexington Road uh, near the Carmine movie theater. Did, um, you heard that via dispatch? Yes, sir. Do you remember the name Judon Brooks? Did you, did you recall any carjacking at the red light that went out on radio track? No, sir, I don't. Was, what time did you pick up your radio to hear what you heard? My radio was always on, and I specifically heard an individual had been seen jumping out of the trunk that had been tied up in that area. You didn't hear anything about carjacking? Not until after uh, the incident on Sycamore Drive. the exact time, it would have probably been between 12 and 12.30, somewhere around there. I don't have the exact time, I'm sorry. After you heard this suspect, Jack and Lewis, what did you do after you heard about this suspect, Jack and Lewis? I began looking for Jamie Hood, and I began looking in our computer system for any addresses that might lead us to where Mr. Hood might be at. What address did you come up with, sir, when you looked up my name? 240 Sycamore Drive. Again, I'm not a positive on the or 100% sure on the apartment number, but I believe at the time it was J8 or Juliet 8. Right. What did you do after you got the Sycamore Drive information? I began responding from the east side of town towards the west side of town towards the Sycamore Drive area. Did you actually go to Sycamore Drive? No, sir. What happened after that? I went to lunch. Okay. Uh, who did you meet for this lunch? Uh, Officer Matt Rain. really didn't have time to talk much at lunch. We were placing our order, and then the call went out for Sycamore Drive. At that point, we left and responded to Sycamore Drive. But you had your radio on? Yes, sir. You heard, you heard the carjacking suspect, Jamie Hood, correct? Or suspect, Jamie Hood? I heard the name of Jamie Hood given as a suspect, okay. yes, sir. You know, I would respect to object that that's somewhat misleading because you're talking about being in your pie, and then you talked about you heard Jamie Hood. You were talking about two different times, and I would ask you then to ask clarify the question about when you heard that name Jamie Hood. I mean, all right. Did you hear Officer Howard, radio, any radio track from Officer Howard stating that he was pulling over carjack car suspect Jamie Hood? No, sir. So you didn't hear Officer Howard stating that he was pulling over Jamie Hood at all from that radio? No, sir. As we finished ordering our food, that's when we heard over the radio call of shots fired, and I recall hearing someone say that they were shot. Okay. I noticed you looking at the video there, that camera recording while you was inside before you run out. Yes, sir. Tell me how that happened. That particular system is the Motorola system. It's an old, outdated system at this time. It was set up to record, uh, I believe it was either 30 or 45 seconds of video automatically. 
So if I was to activate my emergency lights or activate my microphone, it would have recorded 30 to 45 seconds of video um, prior to me activating anything or activating the camera. That's the way it's was set up and designed to do. What, what do you mean by it, it, it record automatically? It just, so you got out the car and it just cut on by itself. Is that what you're talking about? No, sir. It, it cut on because I activated my lights. When I activated my lights, that turned the camera on. The camera is designed in, in, in such a way that once you turn those lights on, it automatically pumps on. It's tied in. It's kind of like the on switch for the camera, but it also records, again, 30 or 45 seconds. You can look at the video and, and kind of tell uh, when 30 or 45 seconds passes, you'll see uh, kind of a change in the video. Not a change, as, uh, per se, as far as on the, on the system, but you might hear, like, the, the, you were supposed to hear the sound as well. Um, it's kind of like our current cameras. Our current cameras are designed the same way. They automatically record um, a, a specific amount of time prior to activation. I thought you said while ago it was 15 to 30 seconds. You late before we started recording. No, sir. While ago I said 30 to 45 seconds. 30 to 45 seconds. You late. Is that what you said? It's not a delay. It's a backup. In other words, it starts recording 30 to 45 seconds of video. And in other words, if I hit my lights, turn the lights on, it's already recorded 30 or 45 seconds of video. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, right. sir. Okay. I thought you were saying a delay. Okay, yes, I got you. Yes, sir. So, um, did you activate the video camera before you went into the restaurant or while you was in there? Because I see you recording before you come out. No. I activated it once I got into my, my patrol car. The reason why you see the the me exiting the, the store is because I've, I've run outside, I've turned on the camera, and it's recorded that time period. And that's the way it's set up to do. I think I'm, I'm kind of lost because when you say you run out there and you see you activate it and come on, I seen you run out. Yes, sir. I mean, it, it was recorded before you run out. How did that camera record before you run out that restaurant when I want to know? The camera itself is a hard drive system. It records on a hard drive. It's designed so that it's recording 30 to 45 seconds all the time. It's always recording 30 to 45 seconds of video so that when I turn on the camera, that 30 or 45 seconds of video is captured. So in my understanding of the system is that it's constantly recording 30 to 45 seconds of video so that when you turn it on, it's recorded that 30 to 45 seconds of video. That's why you see me run out the store uh, and get in my car and start driving. I did run out the store, I got in my car, and I turned on the lights, and then it's it's recording, but it's recording that 30 or 45 seconds time period while I was still in the store. So, did it say, say when you got in the car, did it just continue to record is what I'm trying to get to understand, or just record, 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 is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Just a portion that you're going to play. Yes. Do you know where the numbers are that you're going to? Do you know where that is? Yeah, I'm going to play the same exact thing, but I, I'm saying I speed it up. You're saying, yeah, no, I got I'm it. just, I'm just asking because what I'm about to ask Mr. Chafin to do is, if there's no objection, let him. It's in his machine. You tell him where to start it and where to stop it. Will that work?
recording about 30 or 45 seconds. I believe if you were to, if you recall, it started, the video started at 13.27 and I think six seconds. Um, and I think it's about to click over to 46 or 47. So that 30 to 45 seconds of video is recording on its own. not say yes to that. I can just tell you that this particular system operates that way. Um, and they operate different from system to system, I believe. Okay. Could an officer turn their camera on his car with hand just manually? Can he cut it on and off at his own discretion? Yes, sir. Okay. He also can turn it on when he activates it with blue lights, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chase, would you go to 111? Can I get please, sir? So it's up to 111? No, it just
this one right here? Yes, sir. I believe that was a tax cab issue. Well, they, they passed the tax. Yes, sir. You said that the guy that passed the tax cab came to talk to you and said he saw some things, correct? At, the, at this time of day, I believe that was the driver of the taxi cab that came to talk to me, yes, sir. Okay, so that would be in that video were right there. Yes, sir. Okay, now how far in that video, video is it away from Tony Howard's car and Officer Christian car? How far is that video away from that? Looks to be probably. 50 feet, I guess 100, 150 feet. Can you give us that in yards? Give it, can you give us that in yards? 35 to 50 yards. I thought it, you know, my regulation, I thought it was a little longer than that there. So, uh, that's a good question. Okay. Could it be longer than 35, 50 yards? It could. It could be 100 to 200 yards, could it? I don't think it would be 200 yards. Anything about the white truck, no, sir. Who was driving that white truck? I do not know. Lola, look at Paul. Stop. Who was that white guy, that ball scout, running down off the Christian Park? I don't know. Is he a police officer? <coughs> Who is he? I don't believe, I don't recognize him as a police officer. With a blue shirt on, yes, sir. A white guy with a blue shirt on? Yes, sir. Is that him? No, sir. Okay, could you hold it there, Paul? I would assume he did because I believe he described to Officer Ring that there was another officer that had been shot. I mean, can, you, is, can anybody know this guy? Is he on the state witness list? Did he give a written report or anything? I do not know. Would, I mean, would you think he should have gave a written report and he would have ran off the Christian car and run back up to him? Again, I don't know who that individual is, and I would think that if he had some kind of evidentiary value that they would have identified him. Again, I don't know. Would you think that he had some type of evidential value as you just saw him run off the Christian car and come back? Would you think that? Yes. Will you agree that white way you'll have on a hat? Yes, sir. I didn't get a written statement from anybody at that scene. So you don't want to talk to Chris Bell? Paul, who is this black guy talking to right there, Paul, now? I believe that's the driver of the taxi cab. No, sir, I do not recall. Why didn't you get his name? I wrote his name down. I believe I gave it to Detective Bowen or Officer Bowen at the time. At that point, I do not remember his name. Okay. Did you want to go talk to Chris Bell? Stop. See, you got a pad out of right. Yes, sir. No, sir. Why not? 
that's a pad that just keeps my notes once they're full up. I throw the pads away or I shred them. That particular piece of paper, I believe I gave that to another officer. I don't, I'm not sure if it was Officer Bowen or not, but I do remember tearing it off and giving it to an officer and saying we need to keep this guy's information. Again, I'm not positive. It could have been Detective Bowen, Officer Ian Bowen, or another officer that was at the scene. took what I wrote down on that piece of paper. It was given to another officer. That information that I wrote down on that piece of paper was also put in my incident report, my supplemental. That is the notes. I took notes. I transferred those notes to that incident report. Generally, as he's describing a high risk or a felony stop, usually you're going to have two or more officers. Um, you'll have an officer that's going to be a covering officer that will have his weapon drawn, uh, and you will have a secondary officer that are giving verbal commands to the occupants of the vehicle. Uh, it's better to have more officers if you can, if, if time allows. Uh, but one officer will generally be calling out uh, the individuals in the car to have a third officer there uh, that's going to be placing those individuals in handcuffs or in temporary custody if need be. Do, do, do y'all have a procedure for radio communication about stopping an individual that's a high-risk individual? We do have radio procedures. Again, sometimes time does not allow that to happen on the radio. What do you tell us the procedure, sir? That you would call out that you're stopping a particular vehicle why you're stopping the vehicle, uh, giving particular information about the vehicle, such as uh, the make and model, color, tag, uh, any number of occupants.
elements that you can visually see. Just in the safest tactical manner. So, are you telling this jury we don't have on protocol as far as parking procedures? There, there are protocols, there are policies and procedures, but ultimately we we will place our car behind the vehicle, safest tactical manner uh, for our safety and the public safety. Could you tell us what the protocol say, please, sir? Verbatim, no, sir. How many years have you been over? Sixteen years. Our policy manual is probably about this thick, so no, I could not tell you word for word what our protocols are. I can demonstrate a felony stop if need be. I can conduct a felony stop if need be. Would it help you if I showed you your policy, sir? Sure. one part of our many policies and procedures that we have. I'm talking about the traffic stop. Yes, sir.
Virginia that all like four thousand pages. So I told him he did, but I, I can't say I'm certain that it comes from the prosecutor's office. I just can't find that. But it was in it was in there. This witness, this man, 